this is the Quran, which Quran? we're looking at Surah 9, I uh, 1 to 15. We're not going to look at the whole thing. But again, look at this, guys. You see this? You see this over here, Mushrikeen? Right? Okay, so see Mushrikeen, which is the Shereke, Sharaka, the root, uh, the root letters. The th you know, so this is basically, again, so it really depends on how you translate that because if you read the Quran, it seems like you're referring to polytheists or idolaters, right? But again, this guy, this guy, I think he sees like anybody, like shirk, because shirk means like sharing or having partners to something. So you don't have to necessarily be an idolater to be a mushrik. As long as you have any partner to God, anything, even chocolate, even chocolate, okay? If you, have cho if you think chocolate is more important than Allah, or as, as, not just more important, as important. If you like, hey, like, there's two things I care about in this world. Two things are the most, there are two things that matter to me in this life more than anything else. Allah and chocolate. Allah and chocolate. Then you're a mushrik. Hey, you're a mushrik. You did shirk. You're going to go to hell. You're going to go to hell because you partnered chocolate with Allah. By the way, guys, how did how was this? Do you see what I did? I yelled, but I moved the microphone over here. Was that less painful? So, again, the verse says, this is a declaration of this association from Allah and His Messenger to those with whom you had made a treaty among polytheists. Okay? This polytheist, that's the Mushrikeen that we refer to as here. Um, so travel freely, O disbelievers, uh, throughout the land during the four months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And again, this is the famous verse, I think, here that says, uh, kill them wherever you find them, but if they repent, you can forgive them. Oh, yeah, so see, here's actually, so, okay, so we're referring to Mushrikeen, and this is the Kafirun, the one that you guys mentioned earlier. The, the, see, the Kafirun is the disbelievers, the Mushrikeen is like the idolaters, the polytheists, right? Again, if you keep if you read the Quran, it doesn't seem like it's talking about the same mushrikeen that that guy was referring to, right? It just seems like Muhammad was just didn't like the people who worship their idols, right? But if you go down here, let me find it. Find them. Oh, here. Okay, so you can see the. In this verse, you are also referring to the Mushrikeen here again, right? And you can see that this is a fa this is a verse that a lot of people, a lot of anti-Islam activists cite, and I don't think they do a good job because they don't cite the next verse, and they end up looking like they're taking things out of context, and they look like idiots because the Muslims could like, oh look, you took this out of context. So you always like make sure that you're not like making things worse than they sound. Uh, just be honest with everybody. Right? So this verse says, and when the what? Oh. Let me actually find the Arabic. When the inviolable months, the thing is talking about quorum here, yeah. Sacred months, yes. And when the sacred months have passed, then kill the polytheists wherever you find them and capture them and besiege them and sit and wait for them at every place of ambush. Okay, so this is what people quote, but they don't quote this part. Again, don't do that, okay? Just deal with Islam the way it is. Don't make it, don't try to make it look worse than it actually is, okay? This part it says, but if they should repent, establish prayer, and give zakat, let them go on their way. Indeed, Allah is forgiving and merciful, okay? So to this verse suggests to me that if you repent, then your shirk can be forgiven. But then, I think, where did they get the thing that cannot be forgiven? I think this is the verse that makes people think like shirk cannot be forgiven. Okay, so this is Surah 4, Ayah 48. Again, you can see, Yoshrek, right? So Yoshrek, again, the root verb of Shereke, Sharaka, Sharaka, root, uh, sorry, root 
letters, right? And you can see that Yushrik is here translated as associate partners. So associate partners by Allah, right? See? So even though it's using the same root verb as Mushrikun here, Mushrikun is translated as polytheist here, but when it comes to the verb, so this is a noun, the plural of a noun, but then with the same root letters, here is being used in the format of a verb, and you can see here is Allah is right after it, Yushrik bil Allah. So it means associated, associate partners to Allah, okay? So in so the translation of this verse is saying, Indeed, Allah does not forgive, does not forgive association with him. But he forgive what is less than that for whom he wills. So anything less than, anything less than shirk, Allah forgives. And he, but apparently not shirk. And he who associates others with Allah has certain, certainly fabricate, fabricated a tremendous sin. So is it forgiven or is it not forgiven? Are these the same kind of people? Are the mushrikeen just the people who do shirk? Again, there's so many ways you could play around with these. And that's why you could create many different facts, many different Islamic school of thought. But yeah, it's not that straightforward, right? So this one, you could be used to say that is it, is it not, when he says, it's, here's the thing, when, it says, when Allah says it does not forgive, like, does it forgive it after repenting? And if it does forgive it after repenting, how is that different from other sins? Because other sins to be forgiven, they also need repenting. You can't, God does, just doesn't forgive the other sins willy-nilly. You need to repent those other ones for them to be forgiven as well. So you can't just be like, yeah, I'm just going to forgive them, right? So how is it different then? How is the difference between the forget again? It just doesn't make sense. Um, let me see what you guys are saying. Who decides what is shirk and what not? That is the most important question here, Ronald. Ding, 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 ding. The vagueness of shirk, of what shirk is and what shirk isn't, just leaves you the opportunity to make an entire school of making everything shirk, everything under the sun. You just like, here's the thing. If you're having sex with somebody and you come and in that second, you're thinking about how awesome it is that you're coming over Allah, that could be shirk, okay? That could be shirk right there. I don't know, who, who knows? Nobody knows except this guy, okay? And apparently, <laughs> so. So that's how, that's why this guy says that the whole idea of Tawheed could be part of every part of your life. That's how the vagueness of what is Shrek and what's not Shrek, that's how Tawheed just creeps in into every part of your life, okay? Uh, British Pakistani atheist saying, would asking Muhammad for help and making dua directly to Muhammad, ask him for... Uh, in ask him to intercede on your behalf to Allah be considered shirk. Oh yeah, of oh yeah, of course. Holy crap. This for sure. Yes, making dua directly to Muhammad, that is shirk 101, my friend. That is shirk 101. In fact, that's why Abu Bakr th this is why Sunnis love Abu Bakr when when Muhammad died and people were crying and Omar was like, "No, Muhammad is alive. I can't believe it." No, Muhammad didn't die. Abu Bakr came. Abu Bakr was the wise man. And he came like, guys, if you were following Muhammad, if your religion was following Muhammad, I mean, like following is not the word. Anyways, if you were, if your everything was based on Muhammad, Muhammad is dead. Muhammad is God. So for the people that put everything on Muhammad, Sorry, Muhammad is good. But if you were worshipping Allah, then follow me and let's save this religion. I'm paraphrasing. I don't know the exact quote. But that was basically what he said, right? So Abu Bakr, when Muhammad died, he was telling everybody that, like, look, Islam is not dead. Islam will continue because we worship Allah, not Muhammad. All right. Let's continue. And this is why a lot of these people hate, 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 hate Shias with a passion. With a passion. Again, well, if they were here, they would say, like, we don't hate Shias, we hate the sin. Love the sinner, hate the sin kind of stuff, right? 
let's continue here. Okay, so this, like, verses like these. Okay, so this is Surah 7, Ayahs 148 to 150, and basically the story is, uh, this is basically the story of Muhammad, Moses going, so you guys know the story, this is a biblical story, uh, it's in the Quran. And the Quran says, and the people of Moses made after his departure, you know, when he went to Mount Sinai to get the tablets. Uh, so Moses went there and then, but after Muhammad, after Moses' departure, uh, from their ornaments, a calf, basically this is the golden calf, an image having a lowing sound. Did they not see that it could neither speak to them nor guide them to a way? They took it for worship and they were wrongdoers. Uh, Zalamin. Um, and, when, and when regret overcame them and they saw that they had gone astray, they said, if our Lord does not have mercy upon us and forgive us, we will surely be among the losers. Losers! And then the ayah continues by saying, And when Moses returned to his people, angry, angry and grieved, he said, How wretched is that, is that by which you have replaced me after by my departure? Were you impatient over the matter of your Lord? And he threw down the tablets and seized his brother, um, his, bro his brother Aaron, his brother by the hair, so he grabbed his brother's hair and his... By his, by his head. Okay, so he's saying by his head, but what it means is by his hair. Pulling him towards him, Aaron said, Aaron, basically this is Aaron telling Moses, his brother, O oh, son of my mother, indeed the people overpowered me and were about to kill me, so let not the enemies rejoice over me and do not place me among the wrongdoers, wrongdoing people. Okay, so uh, verses like these kind of... Like people use this, for example, the cow, this calf, even though it doesn't mention it here, was a golden calf, right? And what does gold represent? Gold re represents like wealth, right? So some people come and say like, look, this, is, this, this idea of shirk is not just about worshipping um, idols. You could worship wealth. You could worship fame. You could worship beauty. Um, you could be worshiping your work and, you know, basically they just make the idea of worshiping other things other than God that what they, what all of a sudden becomes worship, it becomes a very loose definition that all of a sudden if you care about anything and prioritize anything other than Allah, that's what becomes shirk. So it's, uh, some people say like this whole cat, golden calf thing, it could be symbolism for wealth, for example, because most people worship money instead of Allah. 